my sports loving sewers. In this course, you're gonna make a sports ball. Either a basketball or a baseball or softball. Of course, you should make both. I mean, if I were you, I would. So remember, it's all about the fabrics that you choose. They don't even have to be uh, related to sports. It could be anything, okay? If you're making it for a friend, maybe your friend loves puppies and maybe you get them a puppy print fabric but they also love baseball, so you're making them a baseball. It's all about how you choose to express yourself when creating your pillows. So let's get started. Download that pattern and let's get started. You make this baseball pillow or softball, whatever you want to refer to it as. So I've decided to choose a white for the front and a nice bright stripe for the back. So as you know by now, if you've taken my other courses, you know that the right sides have to be together and we always work and cut on the wrong side of the fabric. And the solid fabric, the solid white, doesn't have a wrong or right side. So what I'm gonna try to do now is actually cut these together so I don't have to cut twice. Let me show you what I mean. I line them up. Again, the right sides are facing out. And what I'm doing is I'm going to place this pattern on the fold, just like the pattern tells you, because you're going to have to cut two on the fold. So I'm placing it on the fold and I'm going to pin it in place. Now, if you're using a little bit of a thicker fabric, you decide if it's too much to cut, if you want to cut two at one time, you, you make that call. But if you try it this way, just be really careful. Take it nice and easy. Okay, now that everything is lined up, I make sure it's lined up, it looks good. I am ready to cut around. And as usual, you don't have to actually cut around the pattern, but you are free to draw around the pattern and then cut on your guideline. For me, this was easy because these fabrics were thin and I decided that right away, right when I saw them. Okay, so now I remove my pins and I have my front and back cut out in one try of my baseball. So now what you have to do is use this pattern, which is an illustrated and fun sort of stitch and it tells you to cut two out of felt. So if you're gonna use the same color felt, which I want to for this one, you can change up the stitch colors, one felt, one stitch, one color, the other one, the other, another color, you can. But I'm gonna cut them both out of brown. And again, I'm gonna cut in one try instead of doing double the work, because I know for sure that cutting felt is super easy. This way, you're a bit more efficient with your time. Before you pin, I suggest that you make sure that the uh, pattern doesn't move, okay? You see that there? It's pretty good. Sometimes if you're not pinned enough, the pattern might move. And now you're gonna take your time with this one and you're going to cut along until you get all until you get all of the edges, actually, I'm trying to tell you. And this is what I do. If you find this one a little challenging, I, I actually hold this one in my hand just so that I can see where I'm cutting. And I work with each and every corner. So since it's time consuming, I like to do, I like to do it all in one try. And you can save these pieces for a future project. Like this one right here, I'm already seeing a football come out of it. It's all about creativity. And the more pieces you save, the more fabrics you'll have left over for future projects. So work your way around and cut out your stitches. So I cut out these dramatic and chunky stitches. So this pillow is kind of like cartoon-like. And now I'm ready to lay them out onto the front of my pillow. And in case you're not sure on how to lay them out, I included on the pattern, the layout and how the stitches should go. And I also showed you how I cut out the um, stitches initially on that first piece of felt. 
So I always believe more information is always helpful. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay them out like I showed you on my pattern. And then you're gonna pin them in place. And you know what to do right after that. You are going to sew all around these wonderful stitches. And I purposely designed them chunky because I can't even imagine what it would be like to even attempt to cut something super thin out of felt. Even though the basketball is pretty much gonna be that way, it's not as thin as the actual stitches of a baseball. So I laid this out and I feel like, and I pinned it down and I feel like it's not gonna move, so I'm good with that. And I'm gonna do the same here. You can, if you're not sure, move them around. And for this one, unlike I, like I told you in the other ones, don't get too close to the edge. For this one, you are gonna get close to the edge. So this edge is gonna get close and it is gonna get sandwiched in between when you put the back on and you flip it around. I believe this probably needs a nice long pin through every one of these uh, stitches. And now I am ready to sew this in place. This is the part I really enjoy because it's always so relaxing to sew. As always, you always begin on the back, right? And you want that knot to end up on the back so you don't see it. And I'm gonna continue sewing my at least five to six stitches per inch. Turn on a movie, turn on music, and continue your work. I'm done with sewing the details onto the front of my pillow, and now I want to attach the back. So I want my stripes to be horizontal, so I'm gonna make sure that I have them that way as I match up the front and back. As I match them up, I'm going to add a pin about every four finger widths or even hand width apart. And you're gonna sew all around the perimeter of your baseball or softball and you're gonna leave your opening. So of course, you're gonna decide where that opening is and this naturally is a circle so we are going to have to leave the opening on a curve. So I'm just gonna place it right here, the width of my hands, because I wanna be able to get the stuffing in and reach this corner. And now about a half inch in, I am going to actually sew around the entire pillow, leaving this no sew zone or this zone here open. Remember to do a really strong end off stitches on either side. If you need help, okay, if you need help, you can draw yourself a guideline to keep yourself nice and even around. I don't need it, so I'm not gonna draw it, but you can draw it for yourself if you feel you need that. I've completed sewing around the perimeter of my pillow, and I'm finishing to remove the pins, and now what I'm gonna do is not actually make the notches around the curves because I think this fabric is so soft that it just might not need it. So I will really see if that's the truth when I stuff it. If not, I can always go back and add the notches. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna prepare your opening for the blind stitch. So I'm gonna fold in the sides carefully and you can either finger press or you can actually use the iron. Just be careful not to burn or scorch your uh, stitches there. And I'm gonna carefully fold it. It takes me time to do as well because when it's on a curve, it's slightly challenging. Not difficult, I don't like to say difficult because then you're gonna be discouraged to do it. And I'm gonna fold it and go iron. Now we shall stuff the pillow, fluff up a little chunk, and start filling it up, making it come alive, I always say.
it's like such a good payoff. You work so hard on something and then as you're uh, filling it, you really see what you've created and it's exciting. I've begun my blind stitch and just like I've been doing in my other courses, I am sewing on the inside folded over fabric that we have possibly used our iron to form the crease or finger pressed. So remember, you're gonna sew on the inside flap. Don't make your needle come out from the back because then you'll see your thread and you're gonna make your way to the opening, to the end of this opening carefully and skillfully. And the more you practice this, the easier it will feel. Now, sometimes that happens where you see the thread, just go over it, just like that, and you just close that away, no one knows. As you work up to your pin, you just move it out of the way. And I always say I'm going across the street. Now I am going to the white fabric. And now I'm going over to the striped fabric. And now back over to the white fabric. And I repeat this process until I get to the end. Pillow is complete, so I'm gonna give it a little squishing around and whatever you can to spread out that stuffing inside. And if you see areas where you feel like it could use a little stuffing here, like this is where I did my blind stitch, you can use a large pin and you can poke it inside and bring the stuffing up to that area. It does help. And I love this baseball pillow and I'm so happy I chose the white. Yay! Time for the basketball pillow. I just wanna take a quick moment to explain this pattern and how I designed it, just in case you may find it a little confusing. It's actually pretty simple. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out your detail eventually out of felt, but first you're gonna cut it out of paper here. And this time it's not a, uh, an outline, it's a solid line. So just cut along the black. And you're gonna also cut these last two tails here. And you're gonna tape it together. So you're gonna take this tail and you're gonna tape it to this end. And you're gonna take this tail and you're gonna tape it to this end, just like the image here shows you. And then the key that I like to include so you know how to add that to the front of your pillow and what your basketball will look like. Okay, so that's pretty simple, okay? So I have it already done, of course, and this is what it's gonna look like. And here, up close, you can see that I have my tape. All right, so now the fun part of choosing and designing your basketball. I decided to go with just a basic fuchsia or magenta. And to be contrasting and really stand out, I decided to use a regular green or emerald green felt detail. This, should, this one should really be interesting, I think. So, of course, you're free to choose anything. You could even use a flannel, you could use whatever you want, a print, a cotton print, anything you want. And I'm going to, just like I did with the baseball, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these in half. This doesn't have a wrong or right side because it's a solid fabric. And I am going to use the basic ball body pattern, which you could use for both the basketball and the baseball. And I'm gonna pin it down to my two pieces of fabric. The uh, pattern tells you that you have to put the fold of the pattern to the fold of your fabric. And by now, you know exactly what that means assuming that you've taken my other courses. So once I pin it down, what I'm gonna do is cut around. Of course, you're free to trace with a pencil and remove this, repin and cut, but I find it much quicker to just cut this way. 
Remember closing your shears all the way down. There goes a little snippet of my pattern. And again. I believe because I'm left-handed, uh, sometimes I don't really see well when I cut with scissors, but that's okay. I still do a good job. Okay, so now I remove my pins and I have my two fuchsia circles, which is the front and back of my basketball pillow. So for the funner part is cutting out the details. So I have a little missing piece there, but that's okay. Like I said in my past courses, I love to just save things and um, of all my materials because I don't know when I'm going to need it again, right? So here we go. I'm going to try and find the best way that I can lay this out on here. It's not going to fit all the way. So we're going to do it the best way we can. And this is why I'm going to walk you through how to do this. So it is a thinner detail i get that right so you're gonna have to use a few extra pins possibly and you're gonna really want to pin to keep all the pieces still because as you're cutting you're going to notice that it does tend to move that's why i'm going to try to put a pin in all of these detail lines And once you're done with these patterns, remember a good thing to do is to actually keep the pattern in a clear envelope or somewhere, file them somewhere, because you know what? You may want to recreate another one and there's really no need to print out another, um, another pattern. Unless something happens as you were cutting your fabrics. Okay, make sure I'm getting it in the pattern. And one more, and I will show you how I carefully cut out this detail. So here we are. Make sure it's nice and even. And I'm going to easily work my way around. Being careful, I don't snip off much of the pattern. As you saw before, I took off a tiny bit of the pattern. It's really not that much of a big deal. And you are going to easily work your way around this. Cut out the detail out of felt. I'm not going to remove the paper pattern yet because I want you to flip it over and fill in this area. And here's how you're going to do that. You're going to take any of your scraps left over and you're just going to simply place it over there. Okay. You see, you see what you're doing. You're kind of just filling it right in. Okay. So you're going to do that. Well, you can do it this way, but I find it easier to do it from the front. And the reason why um, we have to do this extra piece here is I designed these to fit on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper because that's like the standard printer paper. If I designed these patterns on larger paper, it would only uh, give you a bit more trouble. So we'll take the trouble this way, I guess, right? <laughs> It's actually pretty simple this way, I find. And we can fine tune it and, and fix all these things once we cut out all of the um, pattern pieces and the felt pieces, and then we'll clean it up and I'll show you how. And I'm gonna do the same for this tiny little piece here, which I will actually hold in place and cut. Because it's so small to actually 
do the um, pinning on. But if you need to pin it, please pin it. Okay, so now I'm going to remove my pins. I'm not going to lose these little guys. I'm going to remove my pins. And we are going to place this on the front of the pillow. And of course, we're going to place it again on the pillow. I meant we're going to pin it right in place. So here we go. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter which is the front or the back. And I'm going to use my key, remember, to look at and refer to to know how it is that I need to lay this guy out. And you're going to bring all of these arms, I'm going to call them arms just for now, to the edge of the pillow. Bring it there, and then you're going to, just like a puzzle, fill it in. Sometimes it stumps me, even though... <laughs> I designed this. I have to stop a moment and see. Or you even may have to recut new ones. But we don't have to do that here. So this one does a curve. I'm good here. And then this one goes this way. I am going to use my thinner pins. And this one needs to just be a bit straighter so it reaches. And I'm going to pin this in place. Again, the same amount of pins you're going to add to keep it still. I would add um, pins about every, I'd say, two inches apart. This one is your call. You just don't want it to move. Now, after you pin it, you need to make a decision when it comes to sewing. There's two ways to sew this, okay? You can sew it where you sew on this edge and you work your way around and then you also sew on this edge to keep it down, okay? Or you can just decide to do one stitch in the center. And if you do one stitch in the center, as you stuff it, the edges of your detail may flap up a little, but that is not wrong. It's just the look that you want. So again, you can stitch on the edge and then on this edge, so it stays flat down, or you can do one main stitch and bring it right in the center. So I think I'm gonna do the one main stitch in the center because my orange basketball has the stitches on the edges. So I wanna see how it comes out this way. I'm ready to go. So now I have my uh, double threaded needle with a double knot, and you know, as in the past, you start from the back so that your knot ends up on the back. No one sees it, you don't want it on the front. And I've decided to sew down the center instead of doing the edges. But you can decide differently, of course. And I'm gonna take my time as I try and sew five or six stitches per inch because the smaller, the better. You could remove your pins, of course, as you work up to them. And take your time. So whenever you're sewing, if you pull too tight and the fabric starts to crunch up like that you don't want that okay you want to pull it out and keep it as straight as possible I finished just one of the detail lines and I wanted to refresh your memory in case you need on how to do the end off stitch on the back always on the back of your fabric you're going to go through the last stitch pull the needle and put it through the loop and I do it twice, like double knotting a sneaker, I say. Pull, needle through the loop, tight, tight, perfect. Front of my basketball have been sewn on, and now I'm going to add the back of my pillow by laying it right on top. And since I'm using a solid fabric, there is no wrong or right sides, so I'm good to go. And I'm going to pin, using straight pins, all around 
the perimeter of this pillow, about a hand width or four finger widths apart, just to help you estimate about how many pins you need. And now I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna leave an opening, enough for my hand to be able to reach in for the stuffing. And you are free to draw your guidelines in if you would like to sew on a line. So you can draw in a sewing guideline if you wish. So you have something to trace. And remember, it's about, about, about half an inch away from the edge here. And you can draw it all the way around so it helps guide you. This here is your no sew zone, and now I am going to go and sew all around the perimeter, except here, of my pillow, five to six stitches per inch. I now have my back sewn on, and um, I believe I'm going to add a few notches. So remember, they're like these little triangles, very close to your stitching, but not quite close. Now, there are areas that I feel that I can't add the notches. Uh, because it may be a less than a half an inch. Sometimes I'm not so great with the sewing and keeping in a straight line, especially when I'm rushing. So I shouldn't, because remember, haste makes waste. But there are some areas here that I can't add, I can't add the notches for that reason. And I'm only human. Okay, so here we go. Looks good. I'm going to do another one right here. And now we're going to turn it right side out. Using our hand, we're going to push this out. Now remember, I decided to just do one stitch in the center of the detail, just to see how it would come out. And I'm aware that when I stuff it, it may lift up a little like this on the sides, but let's see. So now before I begin the fun part of stuffing, I have to turn the raw edges in slowly and carefully as I pin them. So take your time. And again, if you don't have access to an iron, you can actually finger press, make the creases like that. But I have my iron ready to go. So I am going to do a small section, I'd say about an inch, and pin it. And then I'm going to continue as I slowly and easily turn down this edge because I want to keep the curve. I don't want to just make turn both sides over inside each other. And then when I look at it as a whole, I have this circle with this straight top here where I, where I did the um, blind stitch. I don't want that. I want it to keep the curve. And that's why I'm taking my time to turn it in carefully and slowly yep that looks round you see what i mean all right my last pin here and i'm going to give it an iron being careful i do not scorch or burn this felt i have ironed the opening with the flaps down or the edges down and now i'm ready to do my stuffing which is always fun Take small bunches and start stuffing away. So I find that with the curve of the pillow, I feel that I have to stuff more in the curves. Well, the whole pillow is a curve, but I mean, I feel that I need to actually almost in a way overstuff so that the curve stays nice and doesn't crease like this. Bunch up. Looking good so far. I have my pillow stuffed and I have to say, I love these colors together. I believe that it came out great. Okay, so I have pinned together the opening and I am ready to blind stitch or if you'd like to refer to it as invisible stitch. I have my double threaded needle ready to go with a double knot at the end. And I will tell you that I am so surprised at how amazing this thread coordinates with my fabric. It was just chance that it happened. So I'm going to show you the blind stitch as usual, but this time I'm going to show you something that I didn't add in 
the last time because I felt it was too much information. So if you want to hide this knot, this double knot that sometimes looks like it's in the way, what you can do is you could start under the flap. So you could get your needle all the way under, put it through. I'm just struggling because I'm not holding the pillow against my body like I usually do. So there we go. We hide it and now it's there. It's hidden under the flap. I don't have to try to push it in if it sticks out with, with the needle or anything. It's good to go. Now remember, you're going to be sewing on the inside folded over panel. And then I come across the street. If the needle goes through like that, take it out and go again. Pull and now we go back across the street. And by staying up by the curve, you are creating a wonderful neat stitch that brings the opening closed perfectly and no one will be able to tell where your opening was for stuffing the pillow. And you will continue this process all the way to the end of the opening. I love the way this pillow came out. I think the colors are really what gets me the most. Anyway, I didn't show you how to end off the blind stitch because I've been showing it to you for the past several courses and I figured why annoy my students? They probably know how to do that already. So in case you're not sure and you were waiting for it, you could just back up and look at the baseball pillow and it's all there.